I knew there was uh, storms heading our way. I knew there was a lot of tornado warnings out. My wife and I are disaster relief missionaries. Uh, we started out just wanting to help people. A tornado hit over here just a few miles up 231, and I thought it was over. When we first get to a disaster, we are more focused on the long term and what we can do to come in and not just be a flash in the pan. All of a sudden, the lightning woke me up. I didn't want to wake Sally, my wife. And she got a phone call from someone, a friend, who said, you know there's a tornado headed your way? All of a sudden, I heard a crash. The house shook. We travel around the world, uh, mostly the United States, helping people after they've been affected by natural disasters uh, start to restore their lives, uh, get back to a what we call a new normal, and uh, having the opportunity to share Jesus with them. These guys showed up in the nick of time, and to be cheerful when they left, as they were, you know, even energetic when they came, and uh, what a joy it was for me to meet everybody that came. I mean, it truly was. So I'm attached. I'm attached to these people. I am. My heart is is attached. I've never forgotten uh, a lot of years ago now when I was much younger, my mentor, Dr. Bill McRae, uh, told me when I was anxious to be in ministry and to, I was a, a relatively new Christian at the time, and he told me, he says, it normally takes when someone decides they really want to do some significant ministry for the Lord, they've made that commitment, about 10 years uh, before they really come to the point where that ministry is fully entered into. And I can still remember, I was very young, I was pretty resentful, 10 years maybe for him. He's older than me, he's probably 40, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's not going to take me 10 years. And it was almost to the month, 10 years later, that uh, I became a pastor of this church. And I was reminded of that as I read the newsletter, which you'll find in all of your bulletin on Calvary Relief Ministries here, uh, that it's been 10 years since you guys started out in the ministry of doing the relief ministry. And at first, it was not even thought of other than, well, here's a hurricane, let's go help. And lots of people from the church here helped. And then I've watched the ministry expand over the years uh, into all over the U.S., into New York City. We've had people come from there as, uh, to even talk to us here. And then recently, uh, in uh, places like Colorado, there's a church in Colorado, some you'll remember, called the River Church. And it was flooded out in the floods. Uh, Kurt and Mary Jo were gone from us here because of that and several other things uh, for about 10 months. And uh, this uh, particular church was uh, transformed because of the ministry of these two together and uh, lots of help that they received from those that they'd met around the country over the years. And as a result of that, the River Church and Pastor Mickey and his wife Kim, who were here and talked to us a little bit not too long ago, and they stayed at our home with Valerie and I, a wonderful pastor, and it's awesome to see what's happened to the church, how they've rebuilt it, and it's also awesome to see what has happened to the community because it's the, the disaster relief is clearly important to fix people's roofs and help them with their uh, inside the house if all of the things that happen when a house is flooded or a storm like a tornado hits, but also there's a tremendous amount of spiritual ministry goes into all of this. I say that to say that in these last 10 years, Kurt has maintained uh, a side job, sort of like the Apostle Paul did in his ministry, where he's been a tent maker and able to come home between disasters and make some money, plus some giving that we of the church here, we uh, give through our missionary fund, and some of you give, and some others from around the country. And uh, that's been sort of a regular thing, back and forth and back and forth, go to the disaster and come back and then uh, make some money and then go out again. But because of the way the ministry has grown over these years, uh, we've met with uh, Kurt and Mary Jo and agree with them that they really need to be full-time in the ministry. And so what we're doing this morning is a couple of things. One is we're officially ordaining uh, Kurt 
And uh, the reason we do that is that he's now going to be full-time in the ministry. He's not going to be on staff here or any other church. He's still going to need your support, even more so than before. But he's going to be full-time in the ministry, and it's very helpful to be ordained. And we do this for all of our missionaries, and he's certainly one of our missionaries. And uh, then uh, uh, we'll pray for him for that and let him uh, speak to you a little bit. Uh, but now, as you read the newsletter and meet with him out on the uh, front porch thereafter, if you want to learn about his ministry, he needs your help in prayer more than ever before and giving more than ever before. And uh, we as the elders of the church want you to know uh, how excited we are for what is happening uh, with Kurt. The River Church is going to become involved, and they're going to become sort of a, uh, a central point for his ministry, even though their home is still here, and they're going to be here uh, on and off as they go from disaster to disaster. You've heard the phrase, he's the disaster pastor. And, uh, and we're excited to see what's going to happen. I believe that the next 10 years, uh, if the Lord doesn't come, we're going, to, we're going to be amazed at what happens in this ministry. And I'm personally very excited to be part of all that is happening in their ministry. So you guys come on up here. And uh, uh, any uh, elders that we have here, I see Peter's here and Keith's here. And uh, we're going to pray for, uh, 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 for Kurt. Now, there's something else you need to know, too. Uh, I know that you can look in the book of Acts. You can see how the church sent Paul and Barnabas out, and they uh, laid hands on, uh, on them and prayed for them to go. You may even think, like, what does it mean to ordain somebody? Well, besides uh, some of the tax reasons for his uh, being full-time in the ministry now, it means that we as a leadership have determined that we believe that Kurt is a godly man, a godly husband, that he has a good marriage, and that he qualifies, as an elder would have to, uh, with the qualifications for an elder in uh, the uh, book of uh, 1 Timothy and also in the book of Titus and that his doctrine is right, and uh, he uh, believes and understands the scriptures as we have taught here in an orthodox and proper way. And so uh, that's certainly the case uh, with this couple, and we want to honor them with uh, uh, this. Uh, Kurt, I want you to come over here so people can see you a little bit. You were hidden last night a little bit. I want you to get down on your knees, and we're going to pray for you. Okay, guys, let's lay hands on him. Uh, Father, I just thank you for the uh, persistence of uh, Kurt and uh, his uh, tremendous partner here, Marie Jo, as they have persisted in this ministry, which can be very difficult, especially over these last 10 years. I thank you for the way that he came to our church originally and immediately uh, became practically indispensable among us and has served in many different capacities among us here, Father. What a great example Kurt has been and Mary Jo of what we've been teaching in Romans 12, that we're to be one another people who really care about the local church. And so, Father, I just want to officially uh, declare, uh, Kurt, uh, as we have the, uh, the power to do here, to ordain him as, a, uh, as a, an elder and a man qualified and ordained to carry on this ministry that we very much approve of. And we ask that you would encourage him, that you would help him, that you would make the ministry very fruitful, Father, as he and... Uh, his wife go out among people around the country and even uh, past the borders of our country from time to time. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Kurt, grab the microphone there and you can have a word or two with us. Oh. Peter said he was going to help me up, but I said I'm not as old as he is. <laughs> but, uh, we are very excited uh, uh, to be up here today and get to talk to you and I pray that you guys would come out and uh, talk to us out at our table out front and learn more about us if you don't already I know there's a lot of you here that have been part of our ministry over the year so whether it was traveling with us, praying for us, uh, helping support us it just uh, we had no idea that this is what we were going to do when we started out 10 years ago we were just going to go down the road and help some people out and go back to work and uh, so it's been an exciting trip. Um, it, we're a little crazy, those of us that do uh, disaster relief. And as, as a, 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 an example of that is yet last night I walk in here and there's a friend of mine holding the door open for me. I go, wait a minute. I just said, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, wait a minute, you live in Tennessee. And then this morning I'm standing out here and a guy pulls up on his Harley from North Carolina. You know, they just drove up here today to be part of that. So I appreciate that about my buddies. And they go out in the field and they help us. So hopefully they'll be out at the table. You can meet them as well. Uh, but we, like I said, we're excited with the stuff going on with uh, the, we're not leaving, 
I mean, we are going to leave. We'll probably be here for about another couple of weeks. So if you want to have us over for dinner, now's the time to do it. Don't wait for a month. You know, sometimes we get phone calls. We're in Colorado. Hey, can you come for dinner tonight? I'm like, no, we're in Colorado. But uh, so, but we don't know where we're going to go. We don't know where we're going to be staying, and it's kind of scary and exciting at the same time. But our house is still here. This is still our home church. And from time to time, we will be back, but it will be less frequent as time moves on. So thanks for the prayers and the support.